Hello, everybody. <laughs> Did you not like that intro? I, I was talking to someone, they're like, can you bring a bit more energy to the beginning? <laughs> yes, welcome. We <laughs> <laughs> well, we were just listening to some show that we can't, some song that we can't play because we don't want to, you know, violate copyright. But we listened to some pump it up music before we get started with this show. Uh, I am feeling pumped up. I'm excited. You're listening. You're not listening. You're part of the Simon Whistler show with Sam Myers. Sam. What's new? Well, I've been sat here with you for very a little of because hours. we batch record these, <laughs> so uh, very little has changed in little mine and Sam's since life the last, since the last the last two minutes. I, I do feel that's a little bit of a shame because I feel like then we can't share like our life updates. It is over a bit of a shame. I, I think it's a bit of a shame that so early in this series we have let people behind the curtain. Oh, rookie error! God, rookie I, error! Oh my phone! Ah, I turned it off. I, I turned so it on in the break. I'm glad that wasn't me. Oh. I was like, I thought it was you. God <laughs> damn it! This is what I do he for a living. Straight up pointing at me, going, "Set them, turn your phone off, man." <laughs> I was like, I don't make these kind of mistakes. I'm a professional. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Oh, karma. God. Oh, okay, nice. But no, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm feeling very good actually i've had three cups of tea i'm buzzing i won't be able to sleep tonight yeah this tea's got pretty strong it's i like, cut myself off like an hour ago, or half an hour ago i feel it in my toes yeah, it's 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 not messing around guys if you're enjoying this show so far you're probably not because we haven't actually covered any you know <laughs> content yet but if you like this show in general if you like what we do here at the podcast leave us a review wherever you get your podcasts if you're watching this on youtube subscribe if you want to see the highlights of the show subscribe you're getting more tea sam i can see you getting more tea um if you all of that stuff just like subscribe it's all good give well, us your comments we want to know what you want to hear yes if you've got suggestions if you've got stories fun things that you'd like us to uh talk about great hit facts up the comments great facts because right want. now i have to look for them myself exactly. which is <laughs> and you know Jesus. we like like we have a treasure trove of incredible stories in our listenership so i th- feel that we should we should like you know tap make use that of that resource. tap that resource yeah. they call it in the biz uh ugc user generated content nice there's a there's a whole business around this i was talking with the company the other day that do they they have these vast their whole model this is <laughs> a little bit off topic but they have these big um facebook pages which they monetize and they make money from like facebook ads or whatever uh-huh. and the way one of them is a big football page and all of their videos and stuff are just videos that people submit just because they want to be on this huge facebook page and then this company they're like okay we'll put it on our huge facebook page they stick some adverts on it and they make money off it well that's how you make and i'm like money, that's a whole lot smarter than how i do it where i have to make my own <laughs> stuff i mean christ uh let's talk about making some talking about making some of our own stuff the first story today Man apologizes for making us all have stupid passwords. Have you heard of Bill Burr? I I don't know about Bill Burr. Bill but... Burr, the comedian, stand-up comedian. Oh, my joke's not working because it's a different Bill Burr. He, dude, you got Netflix. We talked about this in a previous yeah. show. Bill Burr's Paper Tiger is a very good show. Um, Bill Burr. I'm trying to think if I know Bill Burr, guy. bald comedian. Um, this dude. I have America. no idea who Bill Burr is. Bill Burr's good. And he's got a good podcast as well, which is really like, he's, it's interesting because he's like a very funny, like on like stand-up comedian, but his podcast is super chilled out and very good. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, this Bill Burr is a different Bill Burr. And I'm like, it's not a super common name, but anyway, he's basically, I've gone about this all wrong. <laughs> Long password, uh, passwords, right? I feel like since I had passwords, people were like, oh yeah, you know, you've got to have like a capital letter, use some punctuation, use big characters, small characters, numbers. Dude, some websites, I swear, I think Apple's one of these. They're like, yeah, you've got to have a capital letter and you've got to have like a number. And, number you, and a special character. And it's got to be like... lowercase, uppercase. Yeah. And it's like, can't and then can't be the same in, as it was. No. And I'm like, I'm just going to be, every time I log into this, I'm going to be resetting my password, aren't I? Yep. And I use uh, this password manager like Dashlane and stuff, who uh, actually sponsor one of my uh, other other shows, and they do this kind of stuff, which makes it a lot easier. Mm. But it is a pain in the ass. I I literally for my iTunes password, I reset my password every single time. It's a 
absolutely it's absolutely ridiculous like with your phone it's fairly easy to do you sort of just go i forgot my code and then you can you can put your, th- your, th- your fingerprint on it yeah and that's fine however if i have to do anything on my computer i'm screwed yeah you it's it's unbelievably painful all of this is entirely unnecessary so all of these complications of passwords right they're thanks to this dude called bill burr who was basically uh a guy who works for the government he didn't even work in secure like data security he worked just for some random u.s government tech agency and back in the day he wrote this white paper for the government about password security and he didn't really know what he was doing so it was like yeah you gotta have all these complicated things so like no one can crack your password there is an amazing oh please tell me i linked it open up the gizmodo article i'm pretty sure gizmodo have a link to or like a, a picture of the xcdc comic if you just scroll down so, so there's a great example like the the title of this piece is like <laughs> sorry and it's like dollar sign zero r and then registered trademark r and then the symbol for the yen yen yeah. um so scroll down scroll down down there it is okay uh-huh. so this explains this beautifully and for people at home I'm not going to read the comic and describe the whole comic to you, but just go look up XEDC passwords. Basically, it takes the whole thing and it explains why you don't need to have a crazy password with all of these numbers and letters in. Because essentially, the whole matter of it is, um, computers can crack. It doesn't matter. They they. If you've got the password here, they give the example of like Troubadour uh, eighty three, but it's all crazy, like with symbols and numbers and letters and all of this stuff, and it has 20 bit, eight, 28 bits of entropy, which oh, I should have looked up what entropy meant, but I thought it was like decay or whatever. But um, basically, this password is super easy for a computer to guess. They'll crack it three days at a thousand guesses a second. Then, if you just have a long password called correct horse battery staple is the example they give, just four random common words together, just because it's so much longer, it has 44 bits of entropy, and it means it would take... 550 years for the same computer doing a thousand guesses a second to crack that password bill burr i want to punch you in the face well so bill burr uh there's a great quote here he says in the end the list of guidelines was probably too complicated for a lot of folks to understand very well and the truth is it was barking up the wrong tree (laughs) so he's like yeah this was all completely unnecessary and i'm really sorry um but they still stand by their guns today and they tell you no they've changed it have they yes no well i mean the government of the security okay. recommendations of the government have now changed to being like use uh, a passphrase so correct horse battery staple is not a password it's a passphrase uh-huh. or saying like simon and sam make a podcast is a passphrase it's super incredibly easy to remember and it's impossible for a computer to crack because it has so much entropy it's a lot of s's though if it was a game of hangman That's it'd be true. easy yeah dude didn't we talk about in a previous episode jazz we did yeah yeah, we did we did yeah hang if you've not listened to our previous episode jazz it's the hardest word to guess in hangman statistically anyway the whole point of this is don't do it don't do what most websites these days don't force you to use all this crazy shit apple do because they're dicks um (sighs) but most websites they're just like enter a password it's got to be you know over eight characters long so you can use correct horse battery staple even these password managers They'll be like, yeah, your password's a bit weak. And, and then you put like a dollar sign in and it's like powerful. Boom, very strong. Right, is, that, that, is that even true? I don't think that's true. No, I, I, I don't think it's true because ultimately it's just another symbol that you have to cycle through. So basically, I th- like the way I'd understand it is that these, like, as far as I understand, the hackers that like have systems running that are constantly trying to break passwords, they just bombard it. They bombard it with guesses. There's and guesses a couple of options. Guesses. They could do this which is just uh, a brute force attack, mm-hmm. which is where it's just just try thousands of guesses. They can also do a dictionary attack where they'll just run through every word in the dictionary. Uh-huh. So this isn't actually basing it off a dictionary attack. So I guess, but even still, every single word in the English language in every single order. With every single variation of every single, of every single letter and symbol? No, because then we're talking, that's, that's when we're talking about the previous style. If we're just doing passphrases, uh, there are no variations. It's all like lowercase. What if you do alphanumeric, alpha, what if, alpha, alpha bets? What if with cor- uh, like correct horse battery staple, you do then put zeros in as as O's. yeah? But then we're getting into the pain in the ass territory again. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, use a passphrase. It's better if you can. Uh, also, just use a password manager, guys. <laughs> like, really get dash lane. Um, also, P- so that was the PSA, and 
humans are absolutely terrible at being random right mm. it's a it's a big problem like lotteries and stuff even with the big machine they're like how do we make this truly random like everything has to be just so perfect and all of this stuff and we're just terrible at it so people say and if you'd like choosing words you'll still be terrible at choosing words that are truly random yeah so what they say is you get a big list of words you go to a website i think that uh, gizmodo article links to it and it will give you like a random list of words then you get some dice and you roll the dice and you choose whichever you know you're like okay one two three four five six you pick that one and you're like, okay that's word number one roll it again that's word number two and you get your four words for your passphrase and that's like a way to get something that's well it's never gonna be truly random because even then maybe the dice is a little bit biased maybe the even the random generator that has picked those words it's going to be really hard for that to be like algorithmically unbiased i think not an expert but i think because computers suck at randomness as well everyone sucks at randomness it's just i don't think randomness is really a thing i think it's not even a real concept i think it is but and i'm getting really out of my depth here but isn't there something in quantum physics because newton believed that everything would if you had enough information everything was predictable and then quantum physics came along and was like actually ah, it's not quite true mm. but i'm well out of my depth now <laughs> tell um, us more simon yeah, no, no. <laughs> let's just move on before people in the comments are like simon's dumb uh <laughs> let's move on to our next story i had never heard of this and i'm not sure how because it sounds like something i would absolutely make a video about the unknown person Ooh. this is it bring open up the the oh, thing there the from thing. national post never heard of it oh, that's the wrong one uh, oh i think it's canadian um go. so this dude <laughs> he's french maybe he speaks french okay. uh, i think we actually find out later he's from possibly from cameroon, cameroon. we don't really know possibly french canadian but the point is he's been he's been in prison since 2013 he's been in prison for six years because he's refused to identify himself is that a prison imprisonable offense well the problem is he was arrested for running some sort of scam oh okay well. but even now he's been in prison for six years which the article points out is like the term that you'd spend in there for manslaughter <laughs> <laughs> so he's just not identifying himself anytime he goes to any of these hearings like where they're like you need to identify yourself so we can prosecute you and all of this stuff he just tells them to go to hell that's like, not that's just not like a good way to go forward you know yeah. like that's that's not productive just doesn't cooperate huh and they've desperately tried to identify this man and get all this information on him and so basically his story is he arrives in canada <coughs> i think it was early <coughs> early 2000 sorry drink some more tea long day yeah um early 2013 and he comes in on a 10-day tourist visa uh on a passport mm. uh, a french passport and then he gets arrested about six months in doing a scam called the black it's, it was his black money scam Ooh. so this is quite interesting how it works is there would be this money that was brought into the country like illegally somehow and it had been spoiled so it had been dyed black and oh, they had all okay. of this money this was the scam and they'd find a mark and they'd be like hey we need to buy like we've got all this money that's been ruined but there's this expensive chemical we can buy that will remove the uh black from the money and then it, we can use it and so they show him and you know they get this black note and they wash it off with this special chemical which is probably just water or whatever just washing away the black ink and then they're like yeah we need to buy more of this chemical but we can't afford it what we'll do is we'll split the money with you that we get from washing all this money and there's this big pile of black money except that there's only a few that are actually money and the rest are just covered in black uh -huh. there's no magical uh -huh. chemical so they get the mark to be like okay yeah we'll do this together we'll wash it all off and then the guy who you know gave he gave the the con man the money for the chemical and he's run off so this guy gets arrested running the scam which is kind of a clever scam if a bit simple um and yeah so that's how he got into prison never identified himself like i say he was telling all these guys in the in the canadian justice system to just go to hell whenever he was identified interpol get on this right so interpol are like let's get on the case we'll we'll figure this all out uh, it turns out that the passport that he came in on, so they thought he was French all the time, and he spoke French. Mm -hmm. It's Canada, so I guess they do as well. Yeah. And it turns out it's a fake passport, so that's not a great start. Uh, Interpol finally get hit on his fingerprints, but then, and they think, okay, we've got it locked down. It's this dude. 
but then the problem is they look deeper into it and it's like the fingerprints match mul- people uh match multiple people so they don't really know like which one of these people he actually is if any because he's been no help he's not like oh yeah you know you got all of my false identities or is this my real identity no one really knows it does seem like the people come from cameroon so that's what they think they think he's from cameroon they also realized oh he was in prison in the uk for some time (laughs) but the whole time he was just in prison under a false identity identity, (laughs) so they're like we still don't know who he is the mystery continues um i just think there must be a like a a happier way to go through life. <laughs> well, you've been in prison for six years. What have you done that is as bad? Well, it's I, no, I, I love this. This is a quote of what he was saying about going to hell. So, I don't care what you do. You can go to hell, the man said as, as, as she spoke. That's all I have to say to you. Go to hell. Every time. He stood and started for the door. The hearing is not over, she called out. I don't care. Go to hell. <laughs> he called out. It's just not helping. Like... He you're, just doesn't you're want in to prison, uh, but but like, does he not want to go back to real life? Does he not want to? Does he not want to experience what life has to offer? I don't know. It's kind of weird, right? Uh, does he not want to play Babby Foot? Does he not want to go out and I don't know? Do uh, what people from Cameroon? Maybe, possibly, do. maybe he could be from Haiti. He <laughs> who could knows? be. Who knows? He could be from anywhere. Um, however, this is a very recent news article. He's recently hired a lawyer. Ooh. So. Who knows why? Maybe he's going to sort it out. Maybe he's like six years in prison was a bit much. But then now he's going to still have to go. Although I guess maybe because time served or whatever. Maybe. Yeah. Are you? But, are you, sir? Uh, are you Mr. Joe Bloggs? Yeah. Go to hell. <laughs> maybe it's just uh, my lawyer. is <laughs> Just speaking through my lawyer. What does the lawyer say? Uh, I've been told to read this on behalf of my client. Go to hell. <laughs> um. So, yeah, they... Uh, Interpol doesn't know. The UK government doesn't know. No Canada doesn't know. No one knows. No one knows. Maybe this we'll is... find out as this story develops. I hope that we. I hope that we do find out one Maybe day. We can follow up. There we go. Yeah. Uh, you want to do another story? Do you want to do a story? I can do a story. Well, let, let my voice recover. I was yeah. just cracking it. Right there, your so. voice to recover. Okay. Long day. I also recorded a bunch of videos you, today. You're gonna so. end. You're gonna end up like uh, what was his name? David Attenborough. Oh, oh as we yeah. see. I think David Attenborough is just old. I think he's old and he's got a voice like this. Uh, he's, he's, he's very croaky but he's very sort of what's the word hypnotic to listen to yeah it's very nice to listen to and as we move on to the next story what is the next story right, so I would like to talk about underwater rivers Ooh. have you ever seen a picture of an underwater river no alright so basically what, what it is is uh, when heavy salt water uh, heavy salt water f- forms normal rivers underneath lighter fresh or less salty water so mm-hmm. uh there's there's a point in in the water called uh, the thermocline, I believe it is, um, if I remember correctly, back to my diving days, um, and basically it's where two salinities of water mm-hmm. uh, split. So you have heavy water below and lighter water above, mm-hmm. and you can get a real. It c- it can be split because of salinity. It can be split because of temperature. So when you swim through the thermocline, you might notice this if you're in the sea or in a lake or something like that. Your yeah. feet might be significantly colder. Oh yeah. Than your than your definitely. Body. I was the sun like heats the top or whatever. Exactly, exactly. Or it'll or it'll be like a different sort of passage of water coming in, and there'll what? be yeah. No, and so like when you're diving, you can really feel this it's why often you need heavier wetsuits if you're going for a deep dive so you're going down to 30 meters you'll go through the thermocline and you'll spend time in significantly colder water maybe three four degrees which in water terms is a lot and then you come back up and you feel like you're in tropical temperatures even if it's not (laughs) uh so basically all right hang on if if we zoom in here let's uh all right so this is in yucatan mexico which is a diving paradise by the way so they've got all the all the caves there and all that and basically we've got a little diagram of, of how this forms okay so you can see we've got fresh water it is fresh water in this case and then there's salt water which is fed in um underneath the fresh water it's it's heavier in salinity so it drops. it's near the sea then uh i believe and where's the salt water coming from oh hang on here we go here we go we've got to go to the notes uh, from land, Angelita looks like any other sw- ordinary swimming hole. It's not until you dive almost a hundred feet to the underwater river that becomes expo- it's pretty it becomes deep, exposed. right? That is quite deep. A hundred feet is what thirty meters? Ah, uh, no, I was thinking about a hundred meters. No, hundred meters. Hundred meters is, meters is that's really, really deep. deep. <laughs> Um, no, here you go. It's groundwater, salty groundwater. So the underwater river is formed when the fresh top water meets the exposed salty groundwater. Yeah. So it's thirty meters deep, and basically due to the salinity, the water is heavier, so it stays 
below it. Makes sense. And it looks exactly like a river. Um, what? Yeah. This is like this the... is so much better than I expected. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Here we go. Yeah, don't worry. I don't bring crap to this podcast. We're, no, this that's is incredible. Only quality. Hang on. We are sorry. I got to describe that. So we are looking out. It's as if you're looking, and and it's not like a random column of water that you can't see. It's like it looks as if we are looking at a normal river running through a jungle, except there is a person scuba diving in the air above the river. This is it. That's have the, you seen something like this? Um, I have seen the thermocline. So you can you can see the thermocline normally when you when you're diving somewhere, and it does look depending on the salinity of the water, it does look something like that. You can't really see under it. However, that is really special because that's in a channel, and yeah. so it's isolated. And basically similar to a normal river you can't see through it like and that's what's really interesting about this you can see there's there's plants growing out of it and on the banks so it looks like a normal river bank which is it's in, and there's trees and no i mean like yeah, branches no, and trees stuff. They, they are trees trees and leaves you can see there's um like not coral but it's, it's they're just like under vegetation trees. Under, yeah exactly uh, Whoa, I, look at this this is fantastic all right here we go let me zoom in on, on a pic on a picture there is a man sat with a fishing rod on a so he's pretending to fish underwater on a exactly into the river. That's incredible. Isn't that amazing? Like this so is some of the, one of the coolest things that I've ever seen that I've never seen before. There you go. I, it's, I'm 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 glad because that that I saw this and I was like I've never seen that before. Zoom in that one on the right. Uh, this one. That one. Yeah. That's as far it as looks like he's swimming in the. Exactly. He's just, he, so the guy. There's a diver in the in the water and he's sat his whole body up to his shoulders below. Uh, below the thermocline so into into the river as uh, with inverted commas and his head is stuck out and you cannot see his body this is rad he's in the water despite being 30 meters underwater isn't that mind-blowing yes i'm glad uh, no, it's made me so happy that you like that yes i was i was i, I wasn't sure if you'd enjoy this but I this is absolutely do this is my <laughs> favorite story of the day look at that one this this one's perfectly clear look at that Oh God! It's incredible what we're looking at. If you are enjoying this podcast in its audio format, do yourself a favor and pick up the highlights of this one. It'll be on Simon Whistler Show highlights on YouTube. Um, I don't know how do underwater rivers work. <laughs> I imagine so. And Amazing. I mean, Yucatan is pretty much the center of of incredible diving for this sort of thing. Like they they always say, like there's Belize has the has the big blue hole the deep blue hole oh yeah but there's nothing in the deep blue hole is the problem yeah. it's just a lot of dead people at the bottom oh. uh yeah no sadly it's the home of a lot of a lot of injuries and uh, uh, people like free divers that go down too deep oh because because it just goes down and How down and down it? and down it's radically deep right? it's very deep I, I i wouldn't be able to give you a number but it's deep enough for all so around 40 meters all all light begins to disappear uh you, you don't get any light under 40 50 meters and then it gets i think it's 150 70 meters deep i want to say something like that i what might be then? completely wrong well narcosis sets in so people that basically sports divers like so not recreational divers sports divers uh people that do the mix of gases and things like that mm. uh they can typically dive down to not typically it's quite an like an extensive training period that's when diving becomes a, 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 an, a like a, a, an extreme sport uh they can go down to like 120 meters which is that's radically deep. That's really deep. And they have to set up multiple levels where they'll sit with heard about tanks. This. Yeah, and so. they basically just have to sit and decompress on pure, oxi on pure oxygen uh, to pump out as much nitrogen as they can so that they don't get the bends when they come up. Uh, because you fully, like, you fill your blood with nitrogen. And if you come up too quickly, it'll turn into the bends and terrible pain, you die. Uh, but... Yucatan has the underwater caves, the hundreds of miles of caves, and then they've got these rivers. The Great Big Hole is 124 meters or 407 feet deep. I wasn't too far no, off. Pretty oh, good. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Should we do another story? Yeah. Or is there more to add on this, There's no this more incredible to add. story? Go and dive this. This looks incredible. I'm desperate to go here now and, and visit this spot. I want to talk about Koreans. Ooh. Koreans used to eat a lot. Still do, don't they? No. I mean... Not like they used to. And this is weird, right? Because when I think of the past, as always, like, people were hungrier. You know, unless, like, unless you were rich back in the day, you were hungry. Hmm. I mean, if you, sorry, I should say that, like, if you were poor, you were hungry. Like, you yeah. think of, like, London in the Victorian times, like, Charles Dickens and all that stuff. Like, hunger was a real thing, and all the rich people were fat. Um, in the past, did you bring up, oh, yeah, okay. Is this the the link? Yeah, cool. This is the link. Koreans absolutely feasted. Like, 
especially compared to at the time and with the other compared to the other asian countries i don't have a date is <laughs> i must have like not put it in there and i don't remember it um but it was like it was until relatively recently yeah but started in like 1592 when people first started you know outsiders started going to korea and stuff and looking at all of this stuff they were like whoa um they eat a lot anyway uh this uh, atlas explorer article and atlas Ex- uh, atlas obscura atlas obscura is an amazing is it obscura or explorer uh that is Scrolls atlas of... obscura obscura i always whenever i want to bring up this website i always <laughs> google search atlas explorer and then it doesn't come up and i'm like oh yeah obscura <laughs> it's an incredible website uh, if you do any traveling and stuff or you go somewhere atlas explorer god uh-huh. damn it atlas obscura has like all of these great like off the beaten path things oh wow um, okay it's really i've, I've cool. never heard of it before I'll Dude, give it a you look. would like this um anyway it's the, the article that they wrote about this starts off with this great anecdote about so the koreans and the japanese are at war and the korean spies are like well the japanese they're gonna be here for a month they don't have much food you know there's not they're they're really you know there's not enough turns out that basically the japanese just ate way less than they did the uh-huh. Koreans were like absolutely feasting, and they thought that the Japanese rice bowls were sauce bowls. <laughs> so they thought the Japanese were there for a month, and it's like no, they were there for the long haul. Oh wow! And yeah, the Koreans suffered because of that. But what did they? What did they eat? They ate rice or? Yeah, wait, which the Koreans or the, 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 the Koreans. Koreans? It's super interesting. The rice is what they ate, and there's a super good reason for it. Um, I will just share a quote from a european who visited korea first and then i'll tell you why Mm -hmm. Uh, when i was in japan the japanese told me their neighbors ate about three times as they did when i later arrived at the port of uh, today's incheon i can't pronounce the old one i saw that it truly was the case unlike the chinese and the japanese who eat at regular intervals koreans eat at all times unbelievable (laughs) amounts of rice along with a fistful of red peppers would disappear in an instant scroll down in the article or it depends how far down where we yeah this dude this, oh, this dude. dude that is one man's meal wow it's a lot of rice but it's a lot of rice but it's a okay. giant bowl he's got a giant bowl of rice in front of him a giant bowl of like soupy sauce and then one two three four five six other bowls of little sides that is absolutely a dream that's like my dream also no. that hat that hat <laughs> it's a couple of sizes too small just a couple uh, but you're saying this is your dream i'm so hungry right now dude. Oh, it's like 8 30 and I haven't, <laughs> I haven't eaten since lunch no, me neither. Me neither. Mm. I didn't even have a bigger lunch. I had liquid food. Oh, what did you have? You. I, what did I have? Doesn't matter. No idea. No, that's that's a relevant pod. But uh, no, it's like uh, this is my kind of dream. I love this oh, uh, yeah. because I always over rice. When I cook rice, deliberately I over rice. Yeah. Like so. That I like I, having an excess of rice. Yeah. I mean, rice, rice is great. I don't feel bad eating rice. As it's in, not, like, I don't feel bad about my soul. It's not great for you. Rice. It might not be. It's not so hard But I love it. But also, it's cheap. Like you can get you can Super get a cheap. ton of cheap I, good rice. Basmati rice. I I spring for the basmati over the long grain. Ooh. Worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a I'm I'm fancy. Yes, um, no, no. But like I find that things like rice you can buy by the by the five kilo or something like that, and and that will last you months. And so maybe that was the same case with them. They just had a lot of rice, and so why not eat it rather than it go not? bad? Does rice go bad? Uh, must do, mustn't it? I guess eventually, if you keep it dry enough. Anyway, another dude he visited wrote, When it comes to serving fruits, for example, large peaches, even a person with the most restraint, even with a, even a person with the most restraint eats around 10. It's not uncommon to see a person eating 30, 45, 50 peaches. Wow. As to melons, the small Korean melons, or chamo, people usually eat around 10 at a time, but sometimes they eat 20 to 30. These are, they say they're large peaches, but large peaches back in the day. So let's assume they're like regular size peaches. peaches today. Or even smaller. Who the hell eats 50 peaches? Well, like, that's, that's, there's just, nah, nah. Like, there's no way that, number one, they weren't fat. Like, no, I mean, these dudes aren't fat. Like, We're Koreans, looking at more people Koreans are not big people. Like, yeah. they're, they're, like, as a general people, they're, they're not big. Like, and if you eat anything in excess, you should get fat. Yeah. So I promised I'll tell you why. Why? Uh, or why, why not why they're not fat um, but why they eat so much and why they eat so much rice particularly it turns out basically a couple of things lots of fertile land they were also really good at farming uh-huh so but big important one back in the day rice at some point was basically i think 
uh, if I'm misremembering it, but they have a barter economy. Mm. And then they were like, let's just standardize it all. So rice is just what we use to trade. Okay. And so people were like, well, I'm just going to grow tons of rice because it's as good as money. <laughs> so they just started growing all this rice. They need to eat all this rice. They had lots of fertile land. They were really good at farming. They needed to eat stuff with the rice. So they started making more and they started eating it all. And life was awesome. Makes perfect sense. And now they eat way less. Like, which That's culture now but, eats way less than they used to? But Koreans are, are really big on barbecue, aren't they? They do Korean, Korean barbecues. Oh, there's a couple of good Korean barbecue. Have you been to uh, the place up by Namis Dimiru? No. That's a great Korean go barbecue there. place. Yeah, it's the first, I had Wagyu beef there the other day. You know, oh, that super what? fancy, yeah. The Wagyu Dude, massaged beef. I'd never had it before. Oh, uh, no. Wait, is that the massage one? It's yeah. like really oh, no, that's, fatty. That's Kobe beef, isn't it? But, but Wagyu, that's Kobe. No, well, Wagyu beef, uh, Wagyu beef just means, actually, Japanese beef. Oh. Uh, but... It's like super when, fatty and all exactly, of this. it's really fatty. They're, they're normally fed a corn-fed diet, are they? And it was good. Yeah, it was pretty good. And they, there's like mouth. the barbecue, and you barbecue it up. And then there's another one near Ipe Pavlova, which is also pretty good. Oh wow, you've got to go. These places no, are, are solid. We'll go sometime. Very good. Sounds good. Uh, okay, um, dude, I get so I'm so hungry. I'm hungry. Some, talking about food. Let's order some Uber Eats. <laughs> <laughs> I can't decide what I want. <laughs> oh, well, now I know I want Korean. Uh, yeah, so nowadays they basically eat less because they're more sedentary, like I've, everyone else. Have you, you know, they they have a lovely sort of food culture in in Asia, like China and Korea, that I really love in Japan as well, where they do the big soups, uh, where yeah. they kind of use everything. They you, like you throw in a bit of tofu, you throw in a bit of fish, a bit of octopus, a bit of this, a bit of blood, all all that sort of stuff, and they use everything, and they're absolutely delicious. The Chinese do this as well. This like mm-hmm. hot pot, is what yeah, that sort of thing. It, right? Yeah, hot pot. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, was, I, I was very, very lucky. I, I got to sit with some local people and eat one once, and it was, it was a really cool experience. And I, you know, when you get something the first time and you kind of in, engorge, is that the word? Gorge. In, engorge on it, and yeah. and you just eat too much. <laughs> I yeah. Know. Well, we talked about that in a previous episode about people's stomachs exploding. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. gorge myself. Maybe me. I'm a, a binge eater. You know, I'm curious about competitive eaters. It's a good question, isn't it? Because there was there to their stomachs explode. Like, I, well, this is it. You see, I watched a, a really interesting video. There's a YouTuber that I really enjoy watching his stuff called uh, Abroad in Japan. And oh, I listened to his podcast. You? Oh, very good. Yes, uh, I think I recommended the podcast it to you. called the same thing. Yep. Abroad yeah, you recommended Japan. it to me. And uh, yeah, he's got a really great YouTube channel as well. Go check him out. But it, he was filming something in a in a little izakaya, a little sort of restaurant, and there was this tiny little woman who is a competitive eater. Yeah. And he struggled with this monster ramen massive monster ramen that had all noodles and everything and meat all piled up it was like maybe sort of 30 centimeters high good lord she had something seven times the size and she was about half his size he didn't finish his one and she completely demolished that one she's a competitive eater competitive eater but she is miniature like think little tiny japanese lady yeah because i feel isn't competitive eating just about like really fast and lots of stuff but then i don't feel like you necessarily eat doesn't mean you eat like a massive amount of food anyway like there was that was no, it kobayashi no. or whatever his name was the famous guy who did the coney island hot dog thing and then one and he was like a tiny japanese man uh very very likely something yeah. like that. crazy crazy oh we should follow up on that i'd oh, be yeah. interested or if anyone knows comments well that maybe because sort of maybe that's the case that's maybe maybe that's the case with these koreans that they were just pushing so much in <laughs> so quickly it was like competitive eating I don't know. yeah at some point you get fat I think they just led busy lifestyles. They were all there to grow all this stuff they had to eat. I suppose, yeah. It's not like today yeah. where you just go to the work. supermarket. Yeah. Do you want to do another story today? Yeah, I can do I got, it, I got one more, but if you want to go before me or... I think I... I no, I, I do. I've got a couple. Let's, let's see what I've got in, in the... Uh, what do they call it? In the canon. Wait, jungle or rainforest? Jungle or rainforest? I want to do that. Are you cool doing that? Yeah, I'm cool doing that. I don't know that. what the difference is. Well, it's so... Okay, so jungle. All right. That's the question. What is what is the difference in jungle? If you haven't read my notes, I haven't. What is, <laughs> in your opinion, the difference between jungle and rainforest? And it's maybe not as Rain? far from you from uh, from like it maybe not as far as you think it is. Okay, from one I would say, probably just geography. No, types of trees. Ooh. Is it types of trees? Clever idea. I want to say if it's like, uh, oh, but there's also forest, right? Mm. Okay, I want to say forest is where it's, but then you can have like an evergreen forest. I feel maybe something to do with deciduous and evergreen. Uh, uh. Okay, no, yeah, no. tell me, I don't know. <laughs> this okay. is this is a podcast where we inform people about exactly. things we don't know. So 
If I had the, a radio notes. The answer is, the difference between jungle and rainforest is that jungle is the densest part of the rainforest. Mm. So there's... Ooh, it, it, really? It's the part that contains all the life. So the word jungle comes from the Sanskrit jangala, meaning uncultivated land. Only 6% of the earth is jungle, but more than half of all species on the earth live in that jungle. Whoa. Yes. And <laughs> the most diverse habitat on the earth is the jungle canopy, formed by a belt of interconnected tree trees tops 150 uh, 130 feet above the ground so roughly 50 meters above the ground the animals that live there never need to leave they get their water from epiphytes plants that grow on other plants and trap water in their fronds some parts of the canopy are so dense that it will take rainwater 10 minutes to reach the ground as it pitter patters down it's incredible uh, it is estimated that... Dude, 90- you're bringing some gold to today's episode. You're welcome. It is estimated that 90% of all jungle animals and plants live among the leaves in the canopy. So they never t- they never touch the ground. Like they're, they're they live in the sky. Live in the sky. So birds, uh, uh, animals, um, like monkeys and all, all that sort of thing. But also also the, uh, the ants and all, all those sorts of things. They just never touch the ground. So this is an interesting fact. All right. Figs are a keystone species well, like in the figs. jungle. All right. I didn't so even know figs grew in a jungle. Take a quick guess. How many types of variety of fig do you think exist? 700. Oh, you're close. 800. Mm. Ah. Wow, that was a wild ass guess. Was well. that a guess? Yeah, yeah. totally. Oh, fantastic. So there are more than 800. Unlike you, the other episode with the bloody jury duty. <laughs> so, how much does a jury duty. Well, someone, I read the notes. 64 pounds. Well, I'm literally controlling the Come notes. Come on, Sam, play so. along. <laughs> controlling the notes. That's true, you are the note master. But, uh, no, no. So, there's 800 varieties of jungle fig, and the fruit that they produce all year round makes the forest's foremost cafeteria. How do they get <laughs> fertilized? All right, this is genius. So, at the bottom of the fig is a tiny tiny hole called the osteol that allows only in a special fig wasp so one type of wasp that fits inside of this osteol dude they lay their eggs inside these these then hatch it's kind of scary yeah i know right these you're ha- just biting into a fig and there's a big ass wasp in there jungle wasp what <laughs> you don't want a jungle wasp jungle wasp just feels worse than normal wasp it does doesn't it like everything in the jungle is scarier i mean wasp is already like 99 level shitty and then you got jungle wasp it's like oh shit it's like jumanji well <sighs> what a movie but, great movie did um, you watch the remake I, I did watch the remake let's not go there tell me more <laughs> God. No, we're, we're coming to the end so they <laughs> I lay, like this they lay their eggs inside of these wasp plants uh the, the eggs hatch so they're not inside the wasp <laughs> They're inside the wasp. They were plant. inside the fig, right? Inside the f- sorry, uh, not inside the wasp. Inside the fig. They're not actually inside the fig, but inside the. No, I'm lying. Inside a tiny hole at the bottom of the fig. Yeah, yeah. That's the... where the wasp goes. Sorry, yeah. They go there. They lay their eggs. These then hatch, and the new wasps go off to pollinate the other figs because they're born in the environment where the pollen already is. So they go off. They fly into a female fig and pollinate it, and then boom, bada boom, bada bing, spreads it. They drop their seeds, and and pollination occurs that's further. kind of horrible yeah but and, yeah. I, I mean there's, there's and the wasps get like a nice little place to grow well yeah nice little environment nice little perfect environment oh. inside of a fig isn't nature horrific isn't nature terrible this is not there's not this is, a- anyway I, jungle versus rainforest i really feel in my mind rainforest was like more extreme jungle but it turns out jungle is more extreme rainforest uh yes so jungle is is just the center of the rainforest it's there's only six percent of jung- jungle on the, in the whole world and there you it's go it's that bit that we've got to it's that bit that we've got to protect it's also a type of music jungle jungle I is think it yeah i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure i don't like it but it, <laughs> it exists very good uh, i want to do another story let me do the last one today okay uh you got another one we can do that next time yeah, um no worries, no worries. Ba, 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 ba. The royal family and mm-hmm. rationing. Ooh. This is also a short one, so it's nice and easy. Bring up that uh, history.com link. I first wanted to mention, because this article on history.com is, it talks about the royal family and rationing, but there's really not a ton to say. So, or was this? No, 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 no. This was, um, oh yeah, I feel like I clicked on this link and it was going to be about the royal family and, ra- and rationing, but it turned out to be about uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth's wedding dress Uh but i was really interested in rationing so this was just my jumping off point first of all though this article talks about the expense of royal weddings you know william and kate's wedding you've read it already haven't you do you know what it is how much they something happened and this is it says start recording when did that happen i don't know 
just hit start recording yeah is that is that the whole thing i really hope not you hit it at the beginning right i'm pretty sure i hit it at the beginning you told me to didn't you i did then i would have hit it well we'll see if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> oh god i have no idea when that happened it's all right um should we go back to the beginning of this section or nah fuck it we'll just continue <laughs> i've got no idea how much this don't worry about it. there's nothing we can do now is that just the screen or is that everything just the screen Woo! <laughs> yeah uh we could um if it hasn't recorded the uh the, the screen we can put up some pictures on the i'll have our editor put some stuff up uh sorry for swearing i crossed. panicked <laughs> dude i swear all the time i think we should bleep them out though maybe because uh we like money bleep it, bleep. um okay how much did william and kate spend on flowers at their wedding a lot um i'm gonna I, I, I don't know i think they're quite conscious of their money because they spend their own money um well they're not oh you think taxpayer would pay for it i no, the taxpayer wouldn't pay for it they're, they're, so. they're quite conscious but they're of super not rich it. so they're super rich so let's say they spent 500 no i think a million a million absolutely bang on is it yep uh let's talk about the queen's wedding in 1947 so taking it back what 60 years so rationing and this is what this whole history.com article was about rationing was in effect and the royal family were not exempt from rations so i'm sure you're familiar with this but maybe our mm-hmm, mm-hmm. international listeners are not during world war ii like certain things were rationed like clothes and some food and all of this stuff because there wasn't enough of it and they wanted people to consume less so basically uh, her wedding dress was paid for with like uh, ration coupons and they had to be really careful with it and all of this stuff and so she didn't have some like giant train of cloth behind her like lady die and uh-huh. all of this stuff uh and all of this stuff was brought in from around the world obviously it was after the war ended but rationing was in 1947 this was but obviously rationing continued for some time afterwards because there still wasn't enough food yeah. um anyway i wanted to talk about rations can you go back to the document yes and there's another one there from historic uk.com because mm-hmm. i i feel like i don't know your my nan was alive she was young she must have been quite young during the second world war Mm -hmm. but she had like ration books and stuff and my nan kept everything okay wow that's interesting she had like her old ration books and stuff which i remember seeing as a kid and i was like okay zoom in on that at the top there what this here yeah it's all in ounces which is a bit confusing but i've got a vague idea of what ounce what's an ounce uh in Uh, I, I I in grams. I think an ounce is like, isn't it twelve grams? Uh, it could be. I don't know. I I I always grew up using oh, ounces. No, twenty eight grams. I grew up using ounces because my mum used ounces. I, I I got it. It's twenty eight grams. So in a typical week, what we're looking at is like the ration thing. And I remember my nan showing me this, and it did look like this. And you'd get your stamps or whatever to collect this. So in a week, for one person, you'd have like four ounces of bacon and ham. So what is that? Like a hundred grams. Mm. Uh, and That's then not a lot. No, no, like two chops of meat. 60 grams of butter two ounces of butter two ounces of cheese four ounces of marge four ounces of cooking fat three pints of milk which feels a bit excessive <laughs> like that's like i don't think i go through three pints of milk a week uh eight ounces of sugar and then one pound of preserves what's a pound like uh I feel like it's uh, half a kilo maybe pound, yeah just totally guessing I, yeah, uh, right, really like taking a rough guess be honest. every two months and then some tea and you get one fresh egg every week and then 12 ounces of sweets every four weeks. I don't feel there's any actual substantial food in this list of food. No. And I remember thinking this and I'm like, okay, well, that's not a lot of How do you food. make anything? It's all just fat. It's like, it's cooking okay, fat. Okay, you know why? Fruit and vegetables was never rationed. Ah! Right? And I'm like, what? So it was, you could have as much fruit and vegetables as you wanted, as long as you had money for it? Hence the carrot cake. Is that what caused the carrot well, cake? Well, that's why that's why there was carrot cake because th- they didn't have enough sugar to to yeah. make uh, and like flour and stuff like I that. I quite to like make... carrot cake. I love carrot. It's my favorite cake. Whoa! I was che- Whoa. Whoa! No! 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 It's my favorite cake. Cheesecake. I will wrestle you to the wow. death. Like it's my uh, uh, carrot cake with a good frosting is. Wow! But like an English carrot cake. I I well I wasn't imagining another type of carrot cake. No, like, no, because like different countries they make carrot cake, but it's not it's carrot not, cake. It's not quite no, the not, same. Not the stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, I thought this wasn't enough. But then I found out like fruits and vegetables were not part of rationing. And I was like, dude, I'd be totally fine. Well, everyone, I mean, I love meat. Everyone had allotments, didn't they? So they basically just made, they did their own 
their own like they had like, their own little plot of of guard of garden where they could plant their own food right uh, not everyone like um, people had little farms and stuff but not everyone i remember my nan had a farm and she was like yeah we got to have chickens and we'd kill the chickens and stuff and eat them and uh-huh. all of this stuff but yeah i thought that was super interesting no, i had no idea about rationing really. that is really interesting uh, i think that whole period that whole post-war period is just a really interesting period of time where yeah. where things were beginning to sort of stitch themselves back together but it wasn't quite together yet you know and like there's i, re- I remember was it this, my grandma telling me about waiting to get bananas or something like that that they get one banana wow. and they had to stop the whole banana trade because of the war and then like <laughs> they well, they would ration them afterwards and there was like oh one gosh. banana i think it was bananas but yeah because my my grand grew up in london and ah. and was she evacuated she was not evacuated she would she wasn't i think she was born three years after the war or something okay. so that whole sort ah, of ten, okay. until she was 10 she was walking around like back then it was really kind of chill like kids just walked around on the streets and she said she used to like pogo stick around all the old sort of blown up buildings and things like that you really oh kind God. of knew that there had been a war like it was really obvious and my nan's 90 so she was born 1933 so she was a kid during the war yeah <sighs> mine's about about 15 years younger okay i, I don't want to say the na- the actual number because i'm not sure yeah I, my, <laughs> my, my nan might be like 91 or 92 maybe 89 i don't know she's around i'm as old as my teeth and a little bit i'm as old as my tongue and a little bit younger than my teeth that's what she always <laughs> used to say when as a kid you'd be like how old are you nan you're so old ah <laughs> <laughs> before you you know gained tact um that's it today um this has been simon Wister's show sam it's a pleasure to have you on here always you brought some great stories today I, that river one solid absolutely i'm so glad have i inspired you to go to yucatan and dive there no you've inspired me to do better with my stories <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> all uh, right i'm glad you enjoyed that simon thank you very much hopefully our video editing our video screen recording has worked out if not it is what it is. It is what it is. People we'll post will just have to pictures. look at our faces. Well, that's it. And we'll, um, we'll post pictures because that might even actually be oh, better for that particular so segment. We'll just post up pictures of it. So good. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. It's uh, and or watching. Review the podcast if you're listening to it. Leave us a comment if you're watching it. Say hi to me on Twitter at Simon Whistler. Sam, where are you at? At this is Sam Myers. M e y e r s. Very good. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We'll be back real soon. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.